Hello and welcome back to this series of how to make videos uh, aimed at teachers in primary and middle schools. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to make an electric Corex racer. Um, what I've done here is to angle the front axle so that um, when you set it off it will go round in a large circle. Um, you do need access to um, a school hall with a smooth floor. You can of course set the axles parallel to make it go in a straight line. Um, I've made the uh, main part of the race out of the thicker 4mm Corex. Notice the flutes are running le uh, lengthwise to make it stronger. Um, it, you, you can cut it into a rectangle shape but I think it makes a more interesting uh, design if it's tapered at one end. Uh, you can use um, a craft knife, cutting mat and safety ruler to cut these. Um, or you can use uh, the old fashioned uh, guillotine that you find, might find in the stationery room. Um, by the way, I sh perhaps I should have said that all the materials to make this racer come in at under £3. And they're all available from my technology shop. OK, um, the first thing we're going to do, I think the first thing we better do is to put the pulley on the motor because it's so small it's probably going to get lost. It just pushes on and it goes that way round. Uh, more about the motor later on. Um, next we're going to get a jumbo straw and cut it in half approximately. Don't worry about accuracy. And we're going to glue the um, rear straw about two centimetres from the end. You could use sellotape, it works really well on Corex and plastic straws. Um, I'm going to use a glue gun. This is a high melt glue gun so I'm being extra careful and giving it just a little bit longer to cool down. Notice I've left plenty of straw sticking out at both ends and made sure that it's parallel with the edge of the chassis. Now the front straw, um, move it back a little bit more, what should we say, three centimetres from the end. If you want your racer to go in a straight line, then have that straw parallel to that one. If you want it to go round in a, uh, a circle, then angle it one way or the other. Um, I want mine to lap, so I'm going to angle mine. Again with these high milk glue guns you've got more like 10 seconds but do be careful of your fingers you can as I said use sellotape so can you see we've got quite a exaggerated angle there for the front axle okay next um, we're going to trim these back so we don't need them sticking out that much just about probably about five millimeters a little bit more for now we can always trim them back a bit later at the front and now let's get to work on the uh, wheels the back we're going to use the large diameter wheels for the rear and the small at the front um, I'm using these MDF wheels they're very cheap um, uh, I've colored them in black with a black marker pen uh, we've got a long axle for the back and a shorter axle for the front. This is 4mm wood dowel. Um, in an ideal world it should fit. Every, all of these are supposed to be 4mm holes. Uh, quite often it doesn't. Sometimes it's loose. Sometimes it's very tight. I prefer it to be very tight because then you can either force it in with a hammer or you can sand it with a sanding block. If it's loose you might need to put a little bit of glue on there but be very careful that you don't uh, glue the whole thing solid. Well, that's a very nice tight fit and we're going to slide that through there. The next thing we're going to do is to put the pulley, a pulley on. Uh, the pulley needs to be um, smaller than the wheel um, I find this size works quite well 
uh, from my shop, its code number is P114. Doesn't really matter which way round it goes. I think this is going to be much tighter. You see, it is going in. To get it to come through the other side, we need a gap. We could use a gap between two tables. I'm going to use these two blocks to force it through. Now when you're doing this, do make sure that you stop before the straw reaches the pulleys. Can you see there's a small gap there? The whole thing must spin really easily. If you carry on hammering it, you're just going to scrunch it up against the straw and it won't spin. So when you've got enough axle sticking out, you can put the other wheel on. Make sure you get, if you have coloured it in black, make sure you've got the black on the outside. Hopefully it's going to be a tight fit. And no, it's a little bit loose, probably because when we hammered it through, it squashed the wood. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here. Just needs a tiny bit. And then quickly push it on. So that's the um, assembled drive axle at the back of the racer. Uh, we're now going to do the, uh, the uh, motor, fix the motor on. Uh, these little motors spin really fast. I think it, I seem to remember it's around about three and a half thousand times a minute. Um, they don't have a lot of torque or turning power. That's why we're using um, a small pulley on the motor and a large pulley on the axle. Um, these pulleys have to line up and we're going to join them together with a number 18 rubber band. Now we don't want the band to be too loose or too tight so put it on and around the pulley and then move it backwards and forwards and adjust it until it's not too loose and not too tight. That feels about right there. I'm just going to make a mark so I know approximately where to put the glue when I glue the motor down. You can buy motor clips, self-adhesive motor clips as well. Uh, so when I glue this on, I'm going to make sure it's sticking out enough so that the groove in that pulley lines up with the groove in that pulley. Um, I'm putting glue on this flat side here. I'm going to try and avoid getting glue near these holes. I'm going to put glue there and there. Uh, I have had some of these where glue gets inside and stops the motor from working. So I'm just going to put some glue along there and some glue along there and then stick it on and check that the grooves line up. And I'm just going to hold that and count to 10 because that has to be fixed securely. There we go. Okay, that should be enough. Let's pop the rubber band on. The rubber band is a number 18. I don't know if I remember to say that. Uh, if you're using a different side, you might you obviously need to put the motor in a different position. Okay, um, next thing we're going to do is to install the batteries. I'm using two AA batteries in a AA, in a twin AA holder. Make sure you put them in the, the, the correct way round. And we're going to use uh, one of these PP3 connectors. Actually, I'm going to take one battery out for now to avoid any short circuits while we're making the circuit up. Okay, and then we're going to glue that down at the back of the racer. Um, we're actually going to switch this off and on simply by taking the battery, one of the batteries in and out. So when you're making designs like this, you need to think about it. You need to make sure it's easy. You've got easy access to actually get the battery in and out. You could, of course, add a switch. So I'm just going to glue that down. There we go. So that's in position. Um, now we could connect all these wires up on this side, but um, if you've got a hole punch, or another way of making a hole, 
I think it's much neater to punch a hole through and pass the wires down to the other side. I need to twist the multi strands together. I have stripped this battery holder connector. The motor, by the way, that's how uh, it, it comes. Um, I've soldered wires on here uh, to make it easier to use. Um, I will do that um, free of charge on, on request. So we pass the wires through. There we are. I think that is worth doing because it looks a lot, um, a, a lot neater. Um, so if we look at the other side now, we're going to join one of the battery wires to one of the motor wires, but we need to make sure that it goes forwards. So at this point we do put the battery, second battery in, and we just experiment by holding one motor wire and one battery wire together, just to see which way it's going. And I think that is the right way. I can get these wires held together properly. Yep, that's the right way. So, while we've got it connected properly, let's twist two of these wires together immediately. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing this. I'm holding two bare ends together and twist them together with my finger and thumb. And then, if you can, I like to fold it in half as well. Let's pop the battery out. You might need to take some time to practice putting the battery in and out and then connect the other two wires together, the other battery wire and the other motor wire. And again fold in half. And then all those connections can be safely stuck down with sellotape make sure the um, connections don't actually touch each other. That will be a short circuit. It's not dangerous but it will ruin the batteries. Uh, there we are. So that's our connection safely connected up. We'll just pop the battery in just to check all is okay. Yep. And you can see that's working fine. So we're now going to work on the front axle. As I said, you may you can have it at an angle if you want it to go round in a circle or parallel if you want it to go in a straight line. Another piece of dowel, let's see if it fits. Now it's going to be very tight. Let's um, sand it off with a sanding block. All my current batch of dowel unfortunately doesn't fit some of the wheels. There we are. Now I might need to trim this straw back. I, yes I will. So let's trim a bit more off. But we don't want the wheel to rub on the side. Just a little bit more on that side and I think we're okay. Yep, there we are. We have enough for the other wheel. Make sure you put the wheel with the black side facing outwards and tap that one on. Again, make sure there's a small gap. And that's your basic racer finished now. We'll just see if it's uh, burst into life. Yes, there we go. As you can see, they are very fast. Um, at this point, I would encourage pupils to. Um, do some designing to add some features to their racer. Um, with this one I've got a, a rear spoiler wing. Uh, this is made of 4mm Corex with some bits of dowel and it's simply pushed in to the back just in case you need access to the battery. And I've got a, 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 a wing at the front as well. Um, on this one, uh, we've got some uh, bendy straw for um, e egg exhaust pipes. Um, on, I made this one a little bit wider because I was experimenting with the batteries around this way. 
but uh, I think it's harder to get the batteries in and out so uh, I've gone back to having the batteries that way. So I hope you enjoy making these and if you hang on you'll see um, um, some more video footage of these whizzing around our school hall here at Ivydale. Thanks very much for watching. When I started to test these racers I discovered that there wasn't enough weight under the front wheels and uh, it wasn't really steering it properly. So what I decided to do was to glue um, two of these, uh, they're called penny washer blanks, they're available from my shop, uh, just metal discs. And I glued two underneath the racer just to provide a bit of weight. Uh, you could use uh, perhaps two 2 p coins. So let's um, set this one loose, try and get it so that it doesn't crash. It is great having a large hole like this. There it goes. Yeah, we've cleared that wall. Let's get the uh, let's set the others going as well. The other one's lost a wheel. This one's going really nicely. Just try and zoom in. Quite hard to keep up with it. Is it going to clear the stage? Yes, we're clearing the stage. Let's zoom back out again. Yes, we're getting a nice, reliable lap out of this one. I wonder how long they'll last on these cheap AA batteries. Well, I hope you enjoy making these um, Corex racers.